Hey everyone, this is Noble Artist, and today in this video, I'm going to be going over a lot of the tools I use, the materials I use, and where I get some of the stuff that I have. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about basically the paints I use and everything like that. And I have mentioned it before and I actually made a video on it, but there's so many new people to my channel who just aren't seeing that and um, keep asking me questions. So I'm going to make this video. Hopefully, it's going to be in one video. I might make it a two part. But it's going to explain everything that I, not everything obviously, but it's going to explain the majority of stuff that I use that I've told you guys before. Um, it's kind of like the basic information um, just to get you started with making your customs and figures like that. So I will be posting this video and it will be on my, um, it will be the featured video so everyone who's new to my channel uh, will be able to see that and hopefully answer a lot of the questions. Um, so you don't have to ask them because I don't get to respond to a lot of the questions you guys ask. So. Um, putting it on a video is going to help. Also, another thing is if you do leave a comment, um, I could be wrong, but this is just what I've gathered from um, doing some little bit of research. But if you leave a comment on your phone or anything other than your computer, like, a, like uh, one of your devices, I can't respond to it. Almost like how you guys can't see the annotations that I put at the end of the video. Um, you can't see those if you're using your phone. And I can't reply to your message or your comment if you do leave it on your phone. It just it doesn't leave me a reply button, so I can't respond to it. So um, this video will help me to answer a lot of the questions you guys ask. Um, so <clears throat> with that being said, also I, I haven't posted a video in a while just because I've been busy with work and family stuff. And it's just taking up a lot of my time. But I am going to be making a lot more stuff. Um, I redid this. I'm not sure if I showed you, but I redid my, my weekly goals. I kind of backed it up a little bit because I had... I had too many um, goals set in mind. I could never finish them all, so I, I kind of um, eased back on that and put one figure um, per day. This here is Wednesday, which is obviously today. Um, I was going to do the contest custom. This is for the, the winner of my um, Heavy Gutter contest. Was going to be I was going to customize one of the new clones or stormtroopers from the new upcoming movie. This is going to be first place prize when I customize it. It's going to be really awesome. Um, I'm still trying to get. Re I haven't looked at all the videos yet. Um, it's just taking some time, but I mean the contest, you know, they come and go. Um, I have a couple of them a year, so I need some time to, you know, go through all those videos and stuff. But I, I'm working on that, and that will be coming out um, soon. But yes, I will be making the the prize for that. Um, so let me go ahead and get into this video. <clears throat> you guys have been waiting long enough. So first thing is first, I'm going to talk about the paint that I use. Now, I guess I technically have four different types of things I paint um, or paints that I use. One of them, it's not so much because it's, I'll show you. Um, but the first paint that I use that I recommend for beginners is Apple Barrel Paint. Now a lot of this paint I've been using since I began um, customizing and actually a lot of these same bottles I've had for like 10 years. I've had them for a long time. Um, but Apple Barrel Paint is a really good paint. It's cheap. Um, you can get it anywhere. You can get it at Michael's. Uh, you can get it at any craft store. I think Walmart actually might have kits that come with it. Um, so you can get this at a lot of different places. And there's different types of it. Like if you go to Michael's, there's like a whole aisle full of it. But um, what I, I mean, it's acrylic paint. So and it's also water-based. And a lot of stuff right here is, is Apple Barrel. And the good thing about this paint is you can't really make too many mistakes with it because it is water-based. So... If you can see that it is dried to the lid here that I can just like Peel it off So I mean it's when it dries it dries like this so you're not going to Mess up anything if you don't like the way it looks you can wipe you can wipe it off you can rub it off you can um, There's ways to get it off of stuff. It's not going to stain your clothes. It's not going to stain um, your your workspace So it's just a good paint um, it, it goes on pretty smooth. Now, depending on the type you get, it's going to be different. I had some types that just didn't work very well, like a gloss, and it's just kind of thick. So um, you can probably also use paint thinner with this, but I haven't haven't done it yet. Um, but Apple Barrel is a good beginner paint that I recommend to get, and it comes in a ton of different colors, and of course you can mix and match colors to get different colors, um, make some custom stuff. But Apple Barrel is a good beginner paint um, because you can work with it, and it's not going to stain anything. Now moving up from that, we have over here, I'll get the orange one because that's my favorite color. Uh, we have Tester's Paint. Now Tester's is a model paint. It is a high quality paint. Again, this is also very cheap. This um, little glass jar is like maybe a dollar. 
maybe a dollar fifty if that it's really cheap and this stuff can go a long way i've had the same paints some of these i've had for a very long time but you have to be careful because these can dry out um if you leave the cap um open or if they're not tightened up enough actually my red paint is um right there it's already starting to dry it's got like a big dry spot in the middle but um this is a really good paint now this one is more permanent once it dries it's very hard to get off um so be more careful with this one this is like the next step so once you're good at painting with that so practice your paints with apple barrel when you feel confident use testers it's the equivalent of drawing with a pencil so apple barrel is your pencil this is your pen uh, once you put it down you better know what you're doing with it um, but it comes in a ton of varieties and colors now this i can i don't think you can get this at walmart unless you can find like a model kit somewhere some walmarts will mine stop carrying it um, I got most of these at Michael's. You can get it at a lot of hardware stores. Why well, I say hardware stores? I'm sorry, craft stores. A lot of craft stores have um, this type of paint, but it comes in a ton of colors, a lot of varieties. As you can see, I have a ton of colors there. Um, so this is a good paint um, to use. It goes on very smoothly and it's more permanent, like I said. So if you want your customs to last longer, then go for that kind of paint. Um, and then third paint, or third thing I use, now this might sound weird, but I do use fingernail polish um, for some stuff because it has a really cool color and you can't get this type of color from like these regular paints because some of these colors that I have, um, they're just these really pretty metallic colors that you can't mix to get to and these are really, really awesome um, colors. And I only have these, I only have a couple of them and I have I think some smaller ones over there, but it's basically the same thing. Um, now these are really hard to use. I don't recommend using these unless you are really confident in your skill because it dries super fast because it is fingernail polish um, and it is thick. So you have to know where you want it and how to work with it. So if you're really brave, you can go for fingernail polish um, for certain things. Um, but if not, stick with those two. And then thirdly, this, I don't really, or fourthly, if that's a, a word, um, this glow in the dark paint that I don't really know if I should even count this as its own thing, but it's kind of not really a paint. It's like an oozy, squeezy bottle. Um, but I just kind of squeeze a blob out and then try to paint with it. Now this is really thick, but if you can get it to work just right, you might have to put a couple coats on. It looks really awesome when you have glow in the dark figures. I did make a clone a long time ago um, that had glow in the dark paint. If you go to my channel, go to my videos, um, it is down there somewhere. You can't miss it because the picture is actually glowing in dark. So that's a really cool paint. Um, so those are the paints that I use. I know there's a ton of other types of paints. There's probably paints that are better that I haven't discovered yet. You could have been using these paints for a long time, but again, this video is for people who don't um, know um, what stuff to use. So this is more like a beginner video. Um, so these are the paints I use. You can get them at most um, craft stores. So with that being said, I'm going to move up to the hardware. If my camera dies because the battery light's flicking, this will be two parts. So this is going to be with the hardware. Um, now I just realized that this same glue I can get at Walmart, like the Walmart brand is really cheap, but I just use super glue. Now this is in a tube. I got this at the dollar store. Now this is kind of tricky because it's in a, a metal tube. So if you put a little bit of pressure on it, it's gonna, um, go everywhere so you have to be very careful when you use this but um it's tricky it's trickier to use this type of glue but you get more out of it so that's the only reason why i use it and i've used it enough to gotten used to um how it works but it's basically just super glue nothing fancy nothing special and it's uh yeah it works really well and it holds my customs together i've thrown these against the wall and i did a strength test back in the day and I lost that video of my old channel, but um, I've had these figures for maybe some of them up to 10 years and they're still held together with basically super glue. So I recommend getting that. You can get that at Walmart. You can get that probably anywhere else. I got that at the dollar store, so you can even get it there. Now the brushes, um, I don't even really want to go into the brushes because mine are terrible. Um, these are my brushes. They're what's left of three different brushes. Um, I have trimmed them up and hacked them to pieces over the years. And I don't really have any advice for brushes because I have a bad example of brushes because I'm not, mine aren't the best. 
So pretty much get a brush that has a really thin um, end to it for detailing. And then of course I have wide brushes. It's a little bit wider if I'm trying to paint like a big area. So brushes, you kind of just, whatever works good for you, whatever feels comfortable to, to use, get a couple different sizes and then um, try to, it's one of those things you have to experiment with, whichever works well with your hands. And I try to find one for very, like I cut these to be very fine tipped like that, um, like this black one. So I can work with details. So try to get at least one that's really small so you can um, get those details in. Cause if it's really big, then you're going to be painting things that you don't want to paint and you'll get it everywhere. So that is definitely one of those things you kind of have to play it by ear. Uh, moving on, we have an X-Acto knife. This is very important. Um, if you're a little kid, like I think a lot of you are, um, this is going to be dangerous. So if you can't, if you're not allowed to use an X-Acto knife, then get someone to use it for you. Um, but this is, comes in handy a lot of times. I cut plastic with this. I cut, um, the toothpicks there that I use. I cut a lot of things with this. Um, it's good for detailing. If you have metal or other things, you can use it as a tool to push um, imprints into things. Um, you can cut fabric, you can cut a lot of different things. So X-Acto knife is definitely a must have. And then probably my most invaluable piece of equipment is my tweezer bees. They are reverse tweezers, like so. So basically if I want to pick up something, I grab it and then I have to put no effort into holding it, which I don't have to concentrate on holding it. This does all the work for me, which is really nice because when you're painting or doing things, you don't want to be focused on trying to put pressure on this hand while doing whatever you're doing with the other hand. That and if something's drying, then you can just paint it and leave it, leave it be. This holds it for you um, while it's drying. So that's pretty cool. Um, these you can get at pretty much any um, craft store. It's actually knife that you can get anywhere. Um, paint brushes again, craft store. Um, now you, this is optional. I had these little scissors just out of necessity. Like I didn't really have any other scissors to use at the time. So scissors are optional, but I have a pair that cuts metal, which are these little ones because I can get in there and get that detail. So they actually fold up, but I don't want to do that because I only have one hand to fold it. And I put fabric on that so it wouldn't hurt my hand. <laughs> but Get a pair of metal scissors, and then this is fabric scissors. They stay sharper because they're only cutting fabric. If they cut metal in both, then it might dole them out faster. Um, hole punch, you need that for, you know, it's optional, but um, for my shoulder pads and other pieces of armor and metal, um, a hole punch is really nice. Uh, duck bill pliers are really handy because you can grab things, bend metal, bend shapes. Um, if you're trying to cut something, you can hold it with this. To get closer to the edge because if you're trying to hold it with your fingers you know your fingers are going to get in the way and you can't really grab it so this will be a good tool for that um, you can straighten metal out that's got some bends to it you can straighten any piece out basically um, and this is also the tool that i used when i made my ray shield armor so flat or duck bill pliers <clears throat> very handy i don't really know what these are called they're just kind of like some kind of snips i have no clue what these are i don't know I, every tool ever made so I'm not too good with all the names, but um, this is pretty good for cutting. It has a good cutting edge I cut metal. I cut wires um, for antennas. I cut um, uh, Pieces of plastic like for weapons like a lot of the clone weapons This is my scrap plastics, but the clone guns and pieces of Lego plastic um, This is pretty good for cutting through that anything thick that needs to be cut um, These will do the job. So if you have something else that works, you don't necessarily need these because I don't know if you're gonna be cutting a lot of things, but if you do, you'll need something to cut with. Go back. Um, and then you're gonna need some kind of file. That's the last tool I have. Over here, file, this is a rat's tail file. It is good for filing around the arms to make them, um, so you can file it so the paint doesn't rub off on the torso. Uh, file down edges when I cut wood and cut up the plastic pieces. Um, they kind of have an edge to them, so this is good for filing away that. It's also good for making the commando helmet because you need to file off the thin. So I have two of those just because I lost one and I found another one. So yes, and then sandpaper. This is a very fine grit sandpaper that it's just um, for that stuff when it gets when you don't need that much um, sanding. Uh, the sandpaper comes in handy really well for like the smaller details and stuff like that. So. You don't need both of those, but I, I just have them, so I use them. 
Um, so those are the tools I get. Pretty much all of those you can get somewhere, either a craft store, Walmart, or a hardware store. They have all that everywhere. These are the paints that I use. Those are the tools that I use. The fabric that I use, I also get at Michael's. It looks like I get it in these swashes. Um, you can probably get this anywhere. Walmart has a fabric section. Literally just go and look at the fabric. and. It's like pillowcase material or whatever it is. It's, see how thin it is? You can see my hand through it. Um, super thin material. Just say, give me a yard of it. It's really cheap or however much it is. And then I paint it black. See, this used to have music notes on it. I paint it black, and then this is what I use for all of my fabric. Regardless of what color it is, I just paint it. But I start out painting it black so I can have a good work surface. And then that is that. Now, I do have a bunch of little doodads that I collected over... Over the years that I use, of course I have sharpies and random pieces of metal and, and stuff like that and different materials, but that's just stuff that you gather over the year. Um, but this here is the basics that you'll need um, for your stuff. And then of course I have a clean, clean workshop, which is important, um, bins for everything that I use so I can organize it all. Um, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much, that's it. That's what you'll need to start off with. And a lot of people keep asking me, oh, last thing I guess is, where I get my customs, where I get my clones, I go to eBay. Other than buying sets at Walmart, like the battle packs, like these battle packs, I get all my clones, all my customs, not customs, all my clones from eBay. I just type in Lego Star Wars clone army or clone lot or just anything with Star Wars and clone and Lego. And I just go trying to find the best deals and that's how I get all my customs or all my clones to, to uh, customize. Um, that and I think... Better deals are getting them at Walmart or just buying the sets themselves. Um, you might get a better better deal. So that's where I get them. I don't have a special dealer. I don't have a supplier. I just go on eBay and buy lots of them. And then I go to Walmart when I can and get them there. So that's where I get all of this stuff. That's where I get all of this stuff. So hopefully this answered your questions. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If um, something comes up, I'll definitely put it in another video. But until then, you all have a great day. God bless. If you like this video, hitchhike it. I will put a shout out up in here. Don't forget, if you're the first person to leave a comment, you will get a shout out up here for your channel. If you could, fist pound that subscribe button right there. It helps me out a whole lot. And then hopefully soon, I'll be getting some cool figures out. I'll do the contest first place prize, custom made. And then I will get that video out soon so you guys can see who won that. And then I'll be working on these as um, the days follow. I'm going to do both of these at the same time. Both of those guards are going to have my ratio armor. Really awesome. I also have uh, my Shadow Trooper, which is epic. He is on eBay as well. There'll be a link down in the description. And then this really cool Scout Guard. Really, really awesome figure. If this doesn't sell, I'll probably keep it in my personal collection because it's really cool. But both of those are on eBay right now. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching this video. Hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you later. Bye.